All right, so when we left off, you guys had swam down to the very bottom of this massive volcanic, well, ancient volcano, where you uh, encountered a, a number of sharks, it's, uh, a mermaid that took you to visit a uh, very odd queen, or at least she claims to be a queen, um, and she seems to be treated as such by the merfolk of this particular area. Uh, but you are exploring the ancient ruins of an elvish city that had been sunk inside this ancient volcano here on a tropical island in the southern seas. Um, you then left the queen's chambers and went down even deeper until you actually reached the very bottom and found your way into a very mysterious uh, what they called it, a prison. And you popped up in a dome-shaped um, chamber mm -hmm. where it had like a small uh, area that kind of goes around the outside edges of the chamber. And then there's this one door in the very f on the one side of the room. And that's where we had left off. Yep. So you find yourselves in this chamber uh, kind of treading water, getting ready to uh, basically get out when you see shadows moving in the in the room around you. you can't quite place where it is because the, there's a strange green radiance to the stone in here, but it's very dim. But it casts cause, because the entire room is lit up with this this strange light, it ca causes the shadows to go in various directions. Remind me, did the this part is drained, right? The queen had drained this part. She didn't drain it. There's but it just, but it is not water. There is not water. You are in a pool of water in yeah. a cavern. Okay, good. No more charades. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> um, so looking around, we don't see what is making the shadows. No. But you can try to make a perception check to see if you can figure it out. First row of the night. That's a very purple one, I like them. Yeah, I just got them. Ooh, sorry. I'm gonna start wringing out the excess water from my hair. <laughs> I haven't noticed that the shadows aren't normal. That's a 13. 13. Um, nice. You do catch what looks to be, just out of the corner of your eye, a humanoid form kind of moving along the very narrow lip of the inside of this, around the edge of this, of this chamber. How far away and how close am I to actually being able to climb out? Um, you're pretty much right in the middle, but so you're about uh, 30 feet from any particular edge. And honestly, that's about how far away you saw this, this person move. Does it look like it's noticed me? Uh, you're pretty sure you've been, been seen. There's some, there's someone or something in the room. Where? Point. Uh, wherever he points, I'm gonna activate my drift globe and I'm gonna send it in that direction to kind of light up that part of the cavern. Okay. As the drift globe uh, kind of drifts off in that direction, you <laughs> see this. Uh, whoever these strange people are that popped up in the middle of the, the chamber, you see one of them throw up a a sphere that bursts into this brilliant, you have blue light. Bl this brilliant blue light and mixed with the green, it kind of creates kind of like a weird optical effect as far as light goes. Everything's just distorted and discolored, but it comes drifting in your direction. How would you like to react? Who goes there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad at talking to character. Um, <laughs> Us. And I start wading towards the shore. Swim. S wading, swimming. I make my way towards the shore. He in a splashy fashion. Towards the voice. With all of your... Yes. With all of her... In the water. Like yes. Her awkwardness. <laughs> and a a skeleton trying to swim. No. This, Fifi, not me. I'm sitting mm. back. <laughs> okay. All right. So you see a skeleton fawn running at you, well, swimming at you. Sort of. Like, skeletons don't swim well because they're not buoyant in any way, shape, or form. 
She's trying. <laughs> she tries real hard though. Call out friend or foe. <laughs> um, that depends on your intention. <laughs> <laughs> we won't kill you if you don't kill us. Can I reach a shore at this point? Sure. Okay. And don't hurt Fifi. I mean, you have your cloak, right? Yep. So, yeah. so I'll you off the hood back. Squishing out my hand. This is where you guys start describing yourselves. Yeah. Um, so Dagmar is a fairly tall woman. She's almost six foot. And she has uh, kind of, it's really dark right now because water, yay. Um, dark blonde brown hair. And, um, She's got a couple of different braids. She's wearing kind of like a sailor's jacket almost. And more swords than is really reasonable. Uh, she's got two swords, two light hammers, um, and two really ugly bags. One is like <laughs> red leather with bat wings. And then the other one is like this white carpet bag with skulls and flowers on it. Um, so something that a demented that grandma would have. Yeah. A very demented grandma from a kingdom of undead. Um, and, uh, she's wearing a kind of weird skin-like cloak, but overall like what she kind seems, of skin would you say it would be? Uh, animal skin. Like, uh, fish hide. Manta, <laughs> that's what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a human skin cloak, you yep. know? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get that in the description. Yeah. Necromancer. <laughs> um, but, uh... Overall, her her posture is generally relaxed. She kind of keeps all of her weight on one on one leg. Her hips kind of cocked out to the side. Right now, she's bringing out her hair. Um, so you see a elf, uh, fairly light skin, a long black hair, kind of on the taller side for an elf, like five foot nine. Fairly slender. Their clothes are wet but you can tell that they were nice clothes kind of royal purplish um he has this unnatural looking light blue streak in his hair um, when did that happen when i got the blue ring oh, a while ago I miss that. <laughs> <laughs> you got highlights you got your hair big <laughs> <laughs> but um he's not He's got the kind of standard elf armament. He does have a long sword and a bow strung to his back, but you can tell that, um, especially since I know you're a fighter, that they do not really have seen use. They're just kind of there. <laughs> it's more for the aesthetic. <laughs> but. And then you see a little potato <laughs> in clothes. Big eyes, big smile. At the moment, she has tentacles because she is part octopus. Only the bottom part. Yes, only the bottom part. So she's kind of like the sea bitch. Um, and then her companion, the skeleton fawn Fifi, who is adorable and small. And she has a bow kind of haphazardly, like, stuck to her skull. Oh, you let me draw that for her. Okay. <laughs> She's like, absolutely. <laughs> um, so Serafina is just extremely excitable most of the time. She's very excited right now because, hello, underwater, and she's a sea witch. So. <laughs> she is all the potatoes aspire to be. <laughs> I figure you see is a tall, tallish tiefling, almost six foot. Um, Deep crimson skin, uh, she's kind of, she's relaxed, but she has a resting bitch face, so <laughs> you do. probably not someone you want to get on her bad side. She's got, um, uh, just, uh, like, a, kind of a fur cloak around her. Um, her hair is dark, deep blue, pulled back into a ponytail, but pretty messy and choppy up front. Um, she doesn't have any pupils, her eyes are silver. You can see she has a broadsword around her hip and a whip there too, and a crossbow slung on her back. What are you doing down here? It's kind of gross. I still don't know how to come down here. <laughs> oh, 
out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, are you trying to get out? Or do you that would be nice. stay here all the time? <laughs> what do you eat down here? Who Fish and moss. Do you eat down here? Oh, that sounds that gross. gross. So you've been down here for about a week and a half. Just, and you, you've tried swimming out, but it is just too deep. You're, you're like several hundred feet below the surface of the water. Uh, and so, and you go out there and it's pitch black, even with your dark vision, you have a hard time actually keeping track of where you are in, in the open water and everything. Uh, so you wind, keep winding up back here in this chamber. You got here because of an asshole wizard. <laughs> you were with a group of adventurers and your wizard was like, hey, I got this new spell. I'm going to try out this teleportation spell. And you did not wind up where you were supposed to be going. Thanks, guys. And you were the only one that wound up here. I'm going to start digging in my pack and pull out some rations because I'm all about feeding people and uh, offer you some real food. It's mostly meat, but it's uh, not fish or Thank moss. You. Thank you. Is there anyone else down here with you? Just me. I'm here about a week now. Can you see in the dark? Yes. Oh, okay. I've oh, got this bio luminescence going on. Here. Yeah, but it's not pleasant long term, so. Fifi is rubbing her head up against you and nuzzling you. She's very excited to see you. And land. <laughs> land is cool too. That too. <laughs> Surprising she made it past the sharks. Well, they'll meet on her bones, so not much appeal for them. It's true. So, we, um... You have tried the door. It does not open. Challenge accepted. I'm just oh. letting you know. Since there's a door here, you have attempted to open it to see if it's a way out, but yeah, it, yeah. it has not opened. It has secret of an open. <laughs> have you explored any further? No. no. Well, let's try the door now. There's four of us. Are you coming with us, or do you just want to like wait here until we get back? Because we're going to check this shit out. I would like to see the sunlight again. I don't think there's sunlight on the other side of the store, but... We can probably get to you to some sunlight eventually. Nice. I'm going to um, hand over my belt of the merfolk to her. Okay. Just hold on to this. Thank Wrap you. it around your waist. <laughs> it will help you not drown. Yeah. For a little bit. That one's like, so, what, an hour or two? So now that, we, now that you have this item, you have the option to basically put it on and swim away. <laughs> Or you can go with them. It's your choice. I'll go with them. Okay. You seem trustworthy. Join us! <laughs> <laughs> it's like you could have really just waited to have the belt until we were done. And then it's like, here, now you, now you can get out. Serafina like would not be like that. <laughs> <laughs> Serafina wants to be helpful. Mm -hmm. Alright, well, Silo is going to make sure he has mage armor cast. Okay. So he has mage armor. Got okay. it. <laughs> well, I mean, it still takes an action to cast mage armor, so I need to make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> All right, I'm going to draw one of my long swords, keeping my main hand free, and then I'm going to go up and I'm going to check out the door. All right, so you approach the door, and as you get up close to it, you can see that the door itself is, is plain. Uh, it looks like it's made out of maybe animantine? Oh. Yet. And then around the, the door is like several runes and stuff. Do the runes um, look familiar or can I understand them? Um, they are not in a language that you recognize. Dagmar is struck with a sudden desire to pop one of these doors off of its hinges and hearth home to take a door to, to the Dragonborn just to see her face. Okay. Give her a whole door. Have a door. <laughs> <laughs> I resist the urge. Barely. So what does it say? Beats me. It's not something I uh, can understand. 
I'm going to try and read it. Is it in giant? Nope. Okay, we're out. <laughs> I'll try and read it. Is it in infernal? Nope. It's not that either. Uh, the runes itself are actually very, very worn as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything ex in this chamber except for the door itself is covered in like kind of like a greenish uh, slime and moss and just kind of... It's been down here a really long time. Are the runes worn in a way where it looks like people have touched them over time to potentially open the door? No. Can I start scraping away the moss? Yeah. So there's moss on the door? No, there's nothing on the door. Oh, the door itself the door is clear. Looks, looks like it's clear. Yeah. Down daily. Um, <laughs> if I uh, detect magic with my Eldritch Sight, do, does the door appear to be magical in any way? It is. So is the archway, and much of the room seems to have some sort of general magical quality. So there's an arch here? Around the door. Around the door. The door okay, has so a frame. Okay, rounded top. Okay, sorry, I was rushing. Okay, I'm gonna shove Silent's arm and be like, look, look, look. It's an archway. No, oh, that's what the runes are on. Yeah, yeah. We have a magic archway door. What if we use that? Like, what if we get these doors out of the way and this is actually one of the portal parts for our portal on the beach? Does it look like the runes match that portal? No, the, particularly. This does not remind me of that portal at all, right? No. No, it's not that kind of arch. Good try. It's, it's um, magical. I didn't actually say it was magical, though. We didn't know um, that. <laughs> it's got weird runes on it. The rocks that we went through, the runes that we went through, had weird runes on it. Look, any text you don't understand is weird runes. It is. <laughs> and it's most likely magical. I mean, given <laughs> my experience. <laughs> Alright, so... Can Serafina read the runes? <laughs> Can Serafina read? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> uh, do I know what kind of uh, magic is permeating this? Can I tell? It is conjuration. Oh, shit. All right. I'm not fully up in my school of magic. Conjuration is about the summoning stuff. Yes, yep. summoning stuff and things and some damaging spells, but mostly that's evocation. If it had been evocation, we'd back the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> Produce objects and. Okay. Um, well, that's not something I can do. And, of course, the, so the door, when we try it, it's locked. It, doesn't budge, right? Uh, you reach out and, and grab hold of the, the ring and it dies. Nah, it's very solid. Very solidly in place. Does it look like it has a standard lock? Set for Uh You don't see any kind of locking mechanism on it. Okay. Part of the door, and I'm gonna say, friend, because I heard a story once where that was the password. You walk up there, say friend. That's the same thing. Huh. Um, she starts trying out random words to see if any of them will open the door. Can I do an Arcana check to see if I can figure out a way to get that door open? Sure. I don't know if Arcana is the right one to do, but uh, 16. All right, so you go up and you're kind of looking at it, checking it out, and you are fairly certain that there's no magical trick required to open the door. 
just seems like maybe it's stuck. You're not really sure. Uh, it has like a handle, like a ring, like you would pull it open or mm -hmm. whatever. But you're looking at it and none, like the magic and stuff that you see around it doesn't lead you to believe that it requires magic to open. Is there a lock? You do not see any kind of lock on it. Do you guys push a full door? Is that what's going on? <laughs> hey, you've been down here for a week. I push on the door. Push on it. <laughs> I attempt to pull on the door. Kick it, kick it. I open up the ugly bag and pull out my crowbar. Okay. I'll, I mean... I'll cast Guidance. Ha ha! I'm gonna stick my crowbar in there and try and pop the door open. Alright, so you stick the door, the crowbar in there and you're like trying to pull the door open and that's not doing anything. You try pushing, and trying to like pry it in such a way that it basically would like pop it in. That, that's not doing anything. It's not moving. Um, I want to investigate the rest of the room. See if I can find any clue or anything. Alright. I'm, me as a player, is drawing a blank on what to do right now. Uh, that's only a 13. 13. Uh, you're looking around and you're kind of like checking out the walls, and the walls are very heavily covered. Um, but you do kind of notice one or two areas where it looks like something is recently, by recently, I mean within the past couple of months or whatever, have disturbed certain sections of the wall. Okay. Um, looking closer at those sections, what do I see? Uh, if you look a little bit closer, you can kind of park, there's like this like hanging, sh like almost like a sheet of this like slime and, and moss and stuff and you can kind of kind of like push it apart and it reveals openings about yay big around. It just kind of goes into what seems to be magically darkened. So if I um, cast Dancing Lights and send one in there, it just... It just goes right out. Okay. Um. There are three of those. And how big around are they? Uh, about a big around. Large enough that you could easily get a hand in there. <laughs> Is that wise? <laughs> now, all three of them are within two feet of one another in a row. Okay. What have you got? Keyholes? Uh, openings that lead. I don't know how deep. There's magical darkness in there that I can't see through. So huh. the, the two furthest ones apart are four feet okay. from one another. All right. Here, back up, back up, back up. I want to make sure everybody's about 10 feet back, at least. Okay. And then I stick my crowbar in one of them. Stick a crowbar in and it goes in. Um, Crowbar's probably what, 24 inches long? -ish? A little bit longer. It goes in all the way and you don't touch the back. Do you stick your hand in mm -hmm. to get Just the crowbar. <laughs> okay. You don't hit the back at all. Pull it back out. Okay. Is my crowbar dark? It looks like a crowbar. Yeah. I sniff it. Does it, it smell like, like water or anything like that? So, so there's nothing in there per se. Yeah, nothing that you are detecting anyway. Well, there's nothing it. in there. Huh? What does it taste like? I don't know where this is meant. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in my ugly bag. So I have a question about mage hand. I can't tell if it's touching anything, can I? I would say yes. I would say that in a way it would it, you wouldn't feel it like you wouldn't feel texture or whatever but you would you can't send it through walls yeah so i would assume that if it hits something solid that you would okay. know so, it mage hand has a range of 30 feet um so i'm going to cast it and i'm just going to send it through one of the holes as far as i can go and see if I it can goes in it go, goes in about three feet only three feet mm -hmm. And um, if I try and have it grab something and pull or turn, does anything happen? Um, that I can tell. You can get a hold of something. Do you wish to pull it, push it, twist it? 
Would Bop be Bop Bop it. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Bop it. Okay, nothing. So there's no sign of like what we need to do with these. No. That we've discovered. That not that you can tell tell with what you have currently done. Um, I think there's something in here uh, that can be manipulated, but if there's three spots, it probably needs to be done either at the same time or it's maybe some kind of combination lock, but who knows if the room's going to, I don't know if there's any kind of trapping mechanism if we do something incorrectly here. So I'm not going to do anything yet. That's good, because that <laughs> sounds sketchy. <laughs> um. So, you mean, like, like, like a toggle on a lock? You I, have to I, move the teeth differently? I, without actually sticking my own hand in, in all three and getting a feel for it, I have no idea. Um, I'm going to start using prestidigitation to just start cleaning stuff up and see if there's... Okay. Maybe there's directions! That's great! Right, so you kind of <laughs> press prestidigitation in kind of small areas at a yeah. time. But you finally get, well, the first one kind of cleared out. Which one? Like the... Um, I would have probably gone to the closest one from the, to the door, cause the, the first one that I would have seen. So okay. whatever... So, all right. So it would be the, the far right one. Okay. Uh, so you get that done, and you kind of get it cleared out, and it looks like a face. And the opening is like a mouth. Okay. Uh, but it's kind of weird because it has. Here, I'll just draw a picture of you easier. <laughs> okay. It's it's Is like it? it's like an open mouth that's surrounded with tentacles. Yeah. And uh, each one kind of looks like this. Ooh. Okay. Oh, so it's basically I'm not almost crazy. like it's almost squid-like in its overall design with four tentacles and a circular mouth with jagged teeth all the way around. But the teeth are actually like etched into the stonework. The actual edges of the circle appear are to be relatively smooth. So it's not like... Teeth. <laughs> I mean, it, there might still be something in there still that... Still don't want to stick your hand in. Yeah. <laughs> um, so working on the next one, does it look the same or are there differences? Uh, they all three look pretty much ident identical. So the, the way they look doesn't seem to say, do this with this thing, do this this one. As far as I can tell, they're all the same. Um, and so it does, that doesn't really give us a clue that I can tell on what to... No, it does not. Um, I'm going to start kicking around. What kind of ground is it here? Is it sand? Is it... Stone. Hard rock. Stone. Alright, start kicking around at mossy patches and pools and stuff like that with my drift club and my hand basically pushing it around. I'm looking for a key or something that looks like it would fit the same size as the mouse. Okay. Give me an investigation check. <laughs> so with my plus zero, that's a one. <laughs> You find more moss. Uh, you, as you're working your way around, you find an odd spot in, in the wall where it has been cleared out and you see three faces with these circular, looks like circular mouths with tentacles all around it. Do these look like the same ones you were looking at? They are the same ones I were looking at. I'm going to start digging through my pack and making a campfire near the door. Because right. I may as well get a short rest out of this bitch. <laughs> All right. Um, Would you like to do anything? No. <laughs> nope. Okay. Well, I mean, well, at this point, your character's already tried, like, everything. No, I didn't notice those before, though. Fair, you didn't really look for them, but... <laughs> it's really hard to say what would have happened no, prior to the actual yeah. starting the play, yeah. so... It's gonna say it would actually... With your wisdom score, you might not have looked too hard for anything. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, wouldn't that suck to, like, these characters show up, you've been stuck here a week and a half, and you're like, oh shit, yeah, I know how to do that. And then you just did it. <laughs> Sometimes wow. you need the inspiration of others. Yeah. 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 
How about you? Um, are we taking a short rest? Is that what you're doing, Bree? Would you, you like can. me? I am making a campfire. So, so I am going rest. to um, play some soothing music for everyone <laughs> um, so that they regain an extra 1d6 of hit points because I know I need it. Should you expend a hit die, you are allowed to basically roll an extra d6. Why not? It was very soothing and beautiful. Kind of like Pure Moods Volume 1. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Something watery based, you know, some sort of yeah. sea. But then a little bit of, you know, like air, airy stuff in there so that mm. you so feel oxygen. Air and, it, and then it ends in like Norwegian death metal. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally Seraphina's thing. <laughs> She's been waiting to show this item. I kind of want to do a bard that uh, has the corpse paint get up, <laughs> go all King Diamond or something. <laughs> um, uh, so if I just keep clearing wall with prestigitation, does anything else show up? I will just going to clean like the entire room. Well, like how oh, wide are sorry. the walls? Like what's well, the size it's, of the room again? It's uh, thir- 60, f- like 60 plus 10 foot ledge. So 70 foot diameter room. So yeah. pretty big. My fire's gonna last like a few hours by itself because it's not like I had like chunks of wood in one of these bags, although now Dagmar is going to put chunks of wood in the bag next time she's on land. But I'm just going to take all of the torches in my pack, and <laughs> just like break them up and make back a nice little fire. Okay. And light it up. Alright, because prestidigitation can clear a cubic foot at a time. <laughs> yeah, every so, six seconds. Yeah. So you're over there pressure washing the dungeon. Good to know. <laughs> well, I, I'll get the little. No, I mean, I it's smart. You're going to get somewhere with it, hopefully. I mean, it's either that or see if I can in- investigate with the mind of looking. I have a more concrete goal to look for, but. You can try that. Um, I'm going to cast guidance on myself for this one. Okay. See if I can find something, anything that's a little better. 21. Uh, looking about, yeah, you. This is pr- it's this literally there. pretty much it. You're clearing out a, a few other spots. You see that there is kind of an artistic motif to the place, but it seems more decorative and doesn't really seem to display anything. It's just mm. a, a decorative pattern, basically. It's very chaotic in its overall nature. Can I do, while I'm sitting there chilling by the fire? Can I do a, um, just like a intelligence check or something like that? Have I heard of any sailor stories about walks with models in them? Like, have I heard of the Cthulhu-headed man kind of thing? Sure. Give me a... Can I add my proficiency modifiers to sailor stuff? Tentacles? Well, <laughs> no. It's not sailor stuff. <laughs> eh, it's 15. It's not bad. 15. Um... Well, there are lots of different stories that talk about creatures of the deep, uh, creatures in the Underdark, um, of course, legends of eldritch horrors that exist that warp and twist the mind. So, um, But in this particular case, you're not really certain. It, it could be too many different things. That's fair enough. So... This is a prison, right? Yeah. Because something in there is being... This is a prison, by the way. The Dragon Queen lady woman... No, wait, no, she wasn't dragon. She was a mermaid. The mermaid lady told us. And this is basically a keeping place, like a holding cell. It's the clink. For, it's the clink. I think that's a bad word. But it's a place where you put something someone evil. I'm not... You know, whatever. I won't judge. But if it's a jail, 
wouldn't there be keepers? Like, wouldn't there be guards outside the jail? Well, I mean, this could just be the entrance to the whole f- facility. Yeah. I mean, it looks fairly well out of the way and protected as is. Plus, at one time, you know, already know at one time this was all, most of this was above the surface of the yeah. water. Yeah, so this is So ancient. it wasn't always well hidden. Right, but it's also ancient, so any guards or guardians left are going to be like supernatural and long lived at this point. I think we need to stick our hands in the hole. Go for it. What about. I probably can't reach. Isn't there a spell for opening doors? Well, it is three feet off the ground and then three feet in. I doubt her arm is even three feet long, which could be completely. (laughs) Fair. Yeah, because I'm only three feet tall. <laughs> that would be some crazy arms. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's why you your guy. Three foot tall potato. I mean, yes, there's a spell that opens doors, but that's not a spell that I know. Always well, um. disappointing us. <laughs> well, hello, red person we just met. You want to stick your arm in a hole? <laughs> Why not? I mean, if that's what's the worst that could at, happen? <laughs> if my so arm gets cut that. off, somebody has to like put that back on though. I can do that, but not Dorian, because he'll put like haunted shit in there. So one thing I will suggest is that if it works, you should be in front of one of the holes. I should be in front of the other because we might have to do all three. Okay, so the three tall people, and then you're on cauterized duty in case any of us lose a limb. Yep. All right. And if you all die, I will make sure your bodies get back to the surface. Loot my corpse, though. You yes. deserve nice things. Thank you. I'm going to get a torch out of the fire, easily one of the chunks of wood, mm-hmm. a shorter one because she's old, and give it to her. All right. So you just have to, like, we're not going to want you to, but if it gets cut off, you need to just stick that fucker in there. Okay. All right. And I can do that. The hole closest to the door, and I make sure to roll my sleeve all the way up. <laughs> yeah, don't ruin my so shoulder. So the far left or the far right, because it is opposite the door. I will go for the middle one. I'm the strongest. All right, so you go for you just gonna stick your arm in the middle. No, no, no. I'm gonna roll my sleeve up, and I'm gonna wait until these two to <laughs> get there too. I call the far left one. Alright, yep. so you get far left. I'll be on the right then. Alright. So. I am going to watch with anticipation. Okay. As you guys move over there, you roll up your sleeve. You're watching, you got your, your torch ready to I set somebody have, on fire. Like <laughs> having a little bit of a snack too. And then you know, off in a corner, you hear like a slight rattling, almost like uh, wood, like bamboo chimes as Fifi's just kind of off in the corner, just kind of. Standing in the corner, standing. <laughs> standing over rocks, standing still. <laughs> She's a really good moral support. All right. yeah. So, who's sticking their hand into the hole? Well, it was my idea. So my I'll just idea. fucking I'll go for it. Wince and just stick my arm in there. Let's see right. if I can feel anything around. Oh, yeah. All right. So you reach your arm in there, and it goes pretty much all the way up to the shoulder. Okay. And you feel around, and you feel a what feels kind of like a knob. I start screaming in pain. <laughs> Just like, ah! 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 Seraphina sets you on fire. <laughs> 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 I'm the <on> torch! <laughs> don't no, no, no. worry, I got it, I got it! It's fine, no, no, no! It's fine, I'm just fucking with you, it's <laughs> fine. There's like an orby thing in there. I'll reach back in and start fucking with it. Right, okay. So you reach in and you kind of feel around on it and you feel... Uh, give me a perception check. Oh god. Uh, wait, that's wisdom. I have a complaint. Okay, so, ooh, no, 15, sorry. I'm okay. proficient in perception. So, you reach around and you feel that in the very center of the knob, there's like a bump. Okay. Is it an Audi bump or an Innie bump? An Audi bump. Okay. I'm gonna be describing this out loud as I do. But other than that, it's like almost like a you kind of feel around, and it's like a you feel like there's like a sphere, but it's like attached to the back of the wall. 
kind of like a, a very like a, a softball sized doorknob basically and right in the center of it is like a small little bump can i turn it at all does it move do you try to turn it yes uh, all right so you go to turn it it doesn't turn it the knob thingy so it's not spinning so like push the middle all right i push the middle and try and turn it all right so you push go to try to push the middle and the whole knob slides forward and then clamps down around your arm. Okay, not faking you, this time. Fuck, fuck. You cannot move your arm. Okay. And then you feel, hear something inside and you feel like a little tiny. It, it's not cutting or puncturing, but you feel dozens of tiny little blades kind of press up very, very gently up against the skin. Um, and you I, can feel it start to vibrate just slightly. <laughs> I mage hand and push the one on my, the one on the far right. So you don't actually investigate yours at all, um, and you push the one on the far right. All right, your <laughs> arm comes off. Oh shit! <laughs> I run with the door. <laughs> uh, you hear a, a very loud whirring sound and it just blends your arm into oh. paste. Oh. Can't get that back. <laughs> it's okay. We'll get you something. Like a hook or something. It'll be okay. You, you take, you you take 42 points arm. of slashing damage. I follow the ground. And you follow the ground. Blood just pouring out of the wound. Dart! Ah! <laughs> Actually, I probably don't say anything. I'm screaming. It's a great yeah. start. <laughs> this is kind of what I expected. <laughs> I have nothing to help you. You cure have wounds. a torch, woman! Cure wounds. You don't have any cure stuff? Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> I have cure wounds. <laughs> <laughs> because I have a wand of healing. <laughs> <laughs> Which would be better to use? Because it's not mass cure wounds, because it's only her. Yeah. Right? Would it be cure wounds or lesser restoration? I don't know. Lesser cure wounds. Is. Okay. Lesser restoration is for like curses and stuff like that. Good to know. Okay. Is it 42 or 40? 42. So, spell save DC and spell casting and. You don't need you don't to worry about anything that. like that. You, you just, just roll how many hit points you get for that. Okay. Yeah. With a DC. D8 for the cure wounds. Plus your personal modifier. Yep. Okay. Six. So ten. You get ten. And the bleeding stops. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, well, her arm is blended up. We can't even like scoop it into a jar or anything. That didn't go well. Glad you went first. I'm not me. just gonna go lay down by the fire. Well, we're off to a great start. So, what's your plan now? Should've done the all up to the same time. Time. I don't know. I. Want to stick it, anybody want to stick an arm in there and investigate the other two holes? She only has one arm left. Yeah, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I do not try and stick my hand in there. You can will, reach the back anyway. I will go over and tend to take arm. Okay. So the one that Dagmar had their arm in if I cast Mage Hand to go in there, does it go the full distance or is it blocked off? No, you can go the full distance. Okay. <laughs> no, I know what my character's doing. It's all y'all's turn. Yeah, I, I know. I, I, I'm in shock. 
I don't know. I can't think of what. It's probably some kind of horrible puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't. It could be one good hole because I tried to push it in all at once. Um. Well, you do know what happened. Yeah. She I, put her hand in. She felt around. She described a, a knob yeah. with, a, with a little bump on it. And then it didn't do anything until after she pushed the bump. So, so well, when she pushed the, tried to push the bump, the, the bump itself doesn't move. The entire knob did. The, yeah, the entire knob pushed in. Right. After so, a few seconds, you hear a loud chunk come from both holes. Can you try pulling it? Um, so Silent is going to steal himself. And on the right-hand side one, he's going to stick his hand in and feel. But he's not going to push or pull or turn or any of that. He's just going to feel, feel the it. shape. All right, give me a perception check. And since you have some sort of idea what you might be looking for, I'll give you advantage. Uh, well, a natural 20 on my first roll, so... Right, you reach in there and you're kind of feeling around and you feel three little nubs. Three. If I go to the far left one, do I feel two? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um... So, uh, the middle one had one. If I mage hand the middle one and push it in, does it work? Yep, it goes in, and then there's a shink. Okay. But since there's nothing there for it to grab, it's just kind of has like a like an ir like a photo iris that basically closes yeah. it around. All right, I think I about this figured it out. I'll go to the left one, the one with the two. Steals himself, push pushes it in, left arm. Okay. You push it in, and it goes in, and shk, around your arm. Alright, go to the far right one. Okay. <laughs> Brace myself, push it in. Yep, uh, you push it in, and it releases on both of the irises, and you hear a, a grating of metal behind you. As the door uh, uh, kind of slides out a little bit. Yeah. And then opens. I should have investigated a little more. <laughs> yeah, it was just definitely a... How long did it take us to get from uh, the villa to here? From the villa to here? About two hours in total. So what's your guys' plan? Well, through the door. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> is that the glare that is Seraphina actually glaring at Silent right now? <laughs> Seraphina is muttering curse words. <laughs> She's very upset that her friend lost her arm. We'll buy you a new one. <laughs> at this point, uh, she's passed out. She's just completely unconscious. All right. Fuck this noise. <laughs> we go through the door. Should I pick her up and carry her? Well, we don't know what's on the other side. Um, I'm. Uh, while we wait for Dagmar to wake up, I guess I'm gonna open the door and look through. Okay. Just you, to see what. You peer through. The uh, you go over and you kind of pull the door the rest of the way open and you see a dark passage that just kind of goes in. You see a couple of side uh, passages, but it just kind of goes very deeply into the dark. I'm going to cast guidance on myself and I'm going to just listen see if I hear anything. A total of 20. Uh, you're listening. Then occasionally you hear something that sounds 
like a almost like a slurping sound a slurpy oozy kind of sound but also you also hear something that sounds almost like a language someone talking far far deep inside okay but it's not in a language that you recognize so i hear so noises and are you telling have you told us this yeah okay um so i will go up to where silent is and i will cast comprehend languages okay all right so give me a perception check see if you can hear it i'll cast the guy Natural one. Oh. <laughs> um, you can't actually hear the what he was talking about. I can't hear anything silent. I go back to Dagmar. But you do see, um, the, but you can now read the runes around the door if you want. I thought that with Comprehend Languages you can't read runes. You can read it, you just can't write it. Well, if the, it depends on if the runes are magical or if they're just text, because the runes could be a language. Okay. I read the runes. And it says, Don't take our mind. Like, Beyond lies the great old one, the ancient devourer. Death to all who enter. Death is down there. It's going to eat us. We're doing great before a boss fight. <laughs> <laughs> Dagon is laying there, she's unconscious, but her final thoughts before she passes out is, I don't remember why we wanted to go in here. <laughs> I think we're all wondering that. You sense something in there, though. <laughs> you, you know that there's something in there, and you greatly desire it. Oh, no. Happen to be ring shaped, <laughs> as in a ring. sounds like, so what are you guys going to do? Dagmar is not going to be a whole heck of a lot of use to you guys no, she's at not. this point. Yeah. I, I think that we need to get Dagmar to the surface and get her help or maybe get back to... Well, you know where there are a plethora of clerics uh, of notable rank. So do these teleportation stones, do they, um... Are they plus one? No, no, can they be activated and send someone unconscious through, or would we, would we have to wait for Dagmar to wake up to use hers? She'd have to wake up to use it. She'd have to activate it. Okay. And can she hitch a ride with us? No. It is a one person. Oof. Well, we can't leave our new friend behind. By the way, what's your name? <laughs> My name is Promise. <laughs> I'm Seraphina. Nice and this is Phoebe. Hi, Phoebe. Phoebe just rattles her head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, you, do you go into the beyond the door or? Phoebe. Pinky's dead. Oh. <laughs> I no, I don't go in yet. Okay. After after about ten minutes, the door closes and slides back into place. And then on the other side, you hear a. So they reset. But it sound did it sound like they might have changed position? Okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry, now you can come up with. Um, so Dagmar's been healed somewhat. Uh, She's not bleeding profusely, but... I want to do a medicine check 
not that I'm very proficient in it, but to see if I can figure out how long it'll take for Dagmar to wake up. Which you I could probably is. wake her up by just shaking her. She's choosing to be unconscious right now. Hopefully in shock. Yeah. Well. 21. Yeah, you can just wake her up. Okay. So I, I wake, Dag, <laughs> wake Dagmar up. Good. She goes to like, sit up, remembers, oh. and just kind of flops back down. What? Serafina will give her a hug. I pat you with one good hand. <laughs> <laughs> and you try and hug with both. I, I grab your hand and, that's okay, Dagmar. You're going to be okay. That's debatable. I think we need to agree. But, Dagmar can go back because she shouldn't just want to give the water. But right. We can't leave Promise down here. Yeah. So the belt that we made, was that? It basically allows them, gives them a swim speed, allows them to breathe underwater, and to vocalize underwater. But it only lasts for two hours. Two hours. hours. And how Should long was the swim down? Give or well, two given hours. given it was two hours total, but you guys actually had to stop and talk to the right. thing. And then we had sea biscuits. And then of course you went through the ship and everything, so it probably only take you about an hour. Okay, so to it, get back it would to last the, to the surface. Enough. Okay. Well, we we know where the place is. Yeah, so I have a feeling you're not going to want to come back here. Uh, not like immediately. Not until you have a new arm. Yeah. Yeah. So what are we doing? We can't leave this one here. It's not nice. We actually know how to get out. She doesn't. All right, well. Um, you should probably just use your, your stone, but we can all swim up. Head back and get help. Where we'll are you going to take your stone to? You can go to Bramble Marsh, you can go to the, basically the villa, or you can go to the city of Deshae. Oh, Those are your three I thought we had locations. one around, yeah. There's a portal to Arondia in Kivar, though, right? Yeah. Um, all right. I'll meet you guys on the shore then. And I'm going to take um, my cloak off. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to toss my cloak to Promise. They have the belt. Yeah, but the cloak is obviously superior. I'm already wearing a fur. Cloak. This is a magical. This is cloak. magic. It's better. It doesn't need to be attuned though. Mm -mm. It's just a wonder's item. Which is not a bad thing. It's a great wonder's item. I want that back. Tosses it over there. I'll see you guys on the shore. And I'm going to activate my hearthstone and right. pop up to the villa. Okay. So that leaves the three of you there. And you guys do anything before you basically start making your way back? Diving into the water and activating your various magical items, you guys begin making your way back to the surface. Um, as you get about halfway up, you notice there is a large object that seems to move through the water around you, but never close enough to actually come within visual range. You can just feel the current as it moves around. And then you get back up to the surface. You find Dagmar sitting in the inn, uh, a tankard. Well, I have a tankard, but I'm sitting on the beach. Okay. I flagged someone down and had them bring me one. Okay. 
I mean, it would have taken us an hour, so you could have easily had a couple. Because there's some empties, whatever. <laughs> um, didn't you say that I have to roll to change back? Uh, yes. I had assumed that you had not tried to change back yet. But now that you are back so up to the surface. now that we are back up to the surface. Alright. So make a wisdom saving throw. Ooh, 18. So 20. Yep. You, you will yourself back into your original shape. She, I would like her to do like kind of like the Little Mermaid, where she comes up out of the water on the rock, you know, and flips her hair back. But I have like, you know, bits and bobs on my face, and it's not very. Really... I Some set seaweed. down. <laughs> I set down my tanker just so that I can swim. Okay. Here's your cloak back. <laughs> Thanks. Very useful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she had to do charades on the way down. I to, did to I really hard things. <laughs> It was very wonderful. <laughs> All right. So, the four of you, are, you are now back on the surface. You see this beautiful beach that kind of stretches on uh, to either direction. It's kind of like a pinkish red colored sand. Um, there's a beautiful emerald jungle that kind of uh, also kind of goes up off the beach a little bit. And you can hear the, the calls of various wild animals and birds. Um, you can see around you is the uh, cliff sides that basically make up the surface portion of the caldera, the, basically the inside of this huge ancient volcano that is now dormant. And you can kind of see that that goes up about 100 feet or so above the inside of this. And there's this beautiful lagoon that's actually inside the volcano. Uh, from where you are at, you can barely make out to the far north of the, of the uh, caldera is there's a huge crack that runs down that side um, but you can't tell whether whether it goes very far or whatever. Uh, there's a number of uh, buildings some in the process of being constructed uh, others that are seem to be uh, freshly uh, freshly built but there's one very large villa that kind of sits out on this like peninsula that pokes pokes out into the uh, lagoon it has a much older looking uh, building and you see numerous people kind of walking up and down the this kind of road that runs between the villa and pretty much where you guys are at. Where are we? Oh, just on an island. It's really nice. Dagmar has a house here for it being built. I've only been here a couple times. Now that they are back, I will toss the empties into my uh, ugly bag. And <laughs> you're not going to keep them back to the tanker. You're just going to keep them. Well, I'm on the beach. I'm not there yet, right? So I will throw them in my bag because I can't exactly carry them anymore. Right. And <laughs> uh, make my way up the beach, leading the way to forget. Did we determine that my house had already been built? Uh, your house has not been completely built. Okay. Make our way to the inn, I guess. I'm yeah. checking with Sandra. Alright. You I'm assuming you've already kinda of checked in a little bit. Yeah. I mean it's been an hour. She probably came down to check on you once she's she might have. Back. Yeah, because um, the people have been up going up and getting drinks for me and bringing them down and they're trying to figure out why I'm not just closer to the source. Right. Somebody would check on uh, that. She, she uh healed your arm as best she could, but she said that what you need is like a is a much higher ranking cleric to just cast regeneration on it. Do we have any of those clerics around here? I think Sandra's as beefy as he gets. She's not that beefy. Yeah. yeah. It'd be 13th level for that shit. Yeah. It's a 7th level cleric spell. Yeah. So what exactly does her arm look like? It's, it's just, just like a a, it's literally just a, a nub that oh. right up at the shoulder. Basically, yeah. as far as she could have reached into it. It's basically, so basically from here up. Like we need to find her like a winter soldier type thing then. Yeah. Get it, Bucky. Let's go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> or we could just go to a Rondia and we could check in with the clerics there. They might be able to do something. I kind of don't like not having both arms. So. It's kind of her thing. Understandable. Yeah, it's literally my thing. Makes sense. 
damn good thing I'm ambidextrous. So you guys go into the inn, and uh, you make your way down into inside the inn, which is the large villa that I described as being the older one. You see a large open room, a uh, number of uh, tables that seem to be ma made out of mostly like wicker or bamboo or whatever, to kind of go with the tropical aesthetic of the, the island. Uh, there are two circular staircases that go up to a walkway up above, so it's basically two streets. Main chambers basically open all the way up to the second floor. You see a number of doors upstairs. There you can see the door to a kitchen is open to one side. You can see uh, two or three different cooks in there kind of preparing different uh, meals. Uh, there is an innkeeper standing behind a, uh, a, a long bar uh, talking to a couple of uh, people. He's kind of a middle-aged gentleman, uh, fairly fit. Uh, but he's got uh, slightly graying hair, um, deep kind of brown eyes, a uh, warm smile, seems very very friendly, human. Uh, and then there's this uh, young woman walking around with uh, honey blonde hair, uh, kind of hazel colored eyes, a uh, broad smile until she looks over at Dagmar and she kind of looks at you with that, that concerned look. But she's uh, currently serving drinks and bringing food out to various people at the, that are sitting at, at different tables. Uh, you do catch a glimpse of a very short uh, girl, about, you'd guess, probably 10 or 11, maybe, maybe 12. You're not really certain. It runs around. She's got very uh, dark black hair, very pale skin. Uh, but that's really all you kind of catch a glimpse of her. She's kind of running around. She's got some sort of doll that she's playing with. Uh, and that's pretty much all you see in here. Uh, but you guys, buy, they bypass all of this and they go over to a side door. They open it up and go in and you see an office. But as you are passing through the doorway, the everything that was the loud uh, animals and the birds and the talking and everything just goes dead silent. And the temperature drops about 20 degrees when you walk into this room. You see a, a very nice desk to one side, a couple of display cases, one of which is empty. The other one has a large purple crystal that's sitting kind of like on a uh, pillow inside of a glass case. And you see a set of spiral stairs that go down into what you guess is obviously a basin. Um, they bypass this area and they go down into the basement area where you see uh, numerous bookshelves with just covered in books, tables, set up with a variety of experiments going on of different like alchemical and just uh, magical based kind of experiments going on and you see this black scaled dragonborn that's kind of sitting off in one corner kind of reading a book don't touch anything know where i am what are you guys doing Oh, I thought we were, like, that was going down here, right? Is this, is this where the portal was? Uh, it's where the right. Dragonborn is that can cast a teleportation spell for you. Or, technically, the teleportation circle that's in there. Right. She can activate it for you. Hey, Callus Day? She kind of rumbles and is like, what? I lost my arm. I need to go to Arondia. Looks at you. Where'd you lose it at? Where'd you see it last? In a Cthulhu hole or in a tentacle monster mouth rock. It was a blender. Hmm. She goes over and she uh, goes over, kind of touches the ground at where the, you see this large circle in the ground with this weird rune set up and a, and a number of runes on the outside edges of it. She touches it mutters a few words and it flashes with this brilliant light and she's like by all means I almost brought you a door it had some rooms on it this isn't going to stay up forever I'll walk through it, let's go <laughs> <Yeah, I'm coming. laughs> alright so you step through that and you find yourself in a cold, wet, rainy city uh, brilliant yeah. white marble uh, structures all around lots of temples and cathedrals uh, you see almost as many churches as you see uh, 
places of business. Uh, find yourself in basically the lower half of the market district, not too far from the gates that would lead you into where the Grand Cathedral is located. Where would you like to go in order to find a cleric to repair your arm? I want to go to my friend's temple. Okay, so make your way uh, through town, and it's on the far easternmost portion of the city. Yeah. Okay. I hire a carriage. Okay. I put down the silver for that because I ain't walking. I'm tired. All right. Well, Pain. she hails a carriage that kind of rolls up like a taxi. You guys climb inside of it, and you begin making your way kind of through these various uh, twisting uh, roadways between all these various kind of close packed closely packed together uh, buildings until you get to a very small chapel on the far eastern portion of town. There you get out, she pays the carriage, and you walk into, um, it's a very simple uh, church. It's mostly one large room with uh, numerous pews and stuff. You don't see very many people in here. Uh, there's a door on either side of like basically an altar area that goes into like a back area, but for the most part this is this this chapel is actually smaller than the villa that you were just at. Okay. Smaller or bigger than? Smaller. Okay. I'll start asking around for Camilla. Well, she's the only person in there at the moment, so. And she's just kind of cleaning. She looks at you and she's like, Dagmar! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I stuck my arm someplace I probably shouldn't have. <laughs> it got blended. I see that. Um, well, have a seat. Let me see what I can do. I don't remember if there's any, uh... Yeah, it regenerates components. about two minutes. Oh yeah, the components didn't make that. I know it takes about two minutes for the whole thing to regenerate. Ooh, does that hurt? I mean, you've seen her body. Right? weird, I think. Or Deadpool. That feels freaking you. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. It'll last for an hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. It would do the job. Right, so she begins the process of casting the spell. Um, she uh, gets it done, and you can feel the arm kind of begin to tingle, or the, the stump. And then slowly it begins to kind of grow itself back out. That's disgusting! You. <laughs> and then after two closer. minutes, you have I just this very few fresh, pink, like, completely unmarred arm. It kind of looks odd with the rest of you because it doesn't have any of the scarring or tan or anything like that. It's like kind of like a milky white color. Dagmar, your arm doesn't match. We should chop off the other one. I'm gonna <laughs> murder you. Uh, how long does the head rush last? Um, that should wear off in about an hour. She's kind of like, there's this loud like sound that she just flops her head back on the thing and says, fuck. So what were you, what She were you waves doing? her original arm at Silent. Kind of, she just kind of looked at you. Yeah. Uh, do you have a particular uh, appearance that this girl has? Uh, Camilla is Venici. She okay. has very dark hair. Yeah, so she's got like a dark brown hair. Uh, dark brown eyes, kind of an olive skin tone. Uh, she's not very tall, maybe about 5'4". Um, not particularly heavy or thin in overall structure, kind of in the, in the middle. Um, she don't look like she's, she's missing out on anything to eat, but she's no, you know, she, she's, she's not particularly heavy either. Uh, she doesn't have like strong like muscle tone or anything like that. Uh, she looks pretty much like the like a Sunday school teacher for the most part. Her hair is kind of pulled back into a ponytail uh, to kind of keep it out of the way while she was cleaning. 
Uh, she wears a simple robe of kind of a grayish, uh, almost off-white robe. Uh, you're not certain if it's that color because it's that's the color it is, or it's, that's just the color it's become from age. Uh, it is not. It is a little worn. You see a few places where it's been stitched back together. Uh, she's currently wearing an apron that uh, is a much whiter color than the robe that she's wearing. Uh, the only jewelry she wears is the, the holy symbol that she wears over the front. Um, she is, did you decide on a deity for this woman? Um, yeah, she is uh, very Kalmori. Okay. She's in a right, so she's, Her she's family's got the, religion was something else, and that's why she's not part okay. of that family anymore. Uh, she's wearing on her necklace is the, the chalice with the flame in it. So she's she just kind of sit there. So. so, you're Dagmar's friends. I'm Seraphina. And this is Fifi. That's very nice. <laughs> Dorian did it. Oh. Uh, this is Promise. She's new. Found her in a cave. Her Who's friends are assholes. Moss. That's terrible. And Tell fish. you what, let me let me fix you a meal. No, that's not really necessary. Yeah. No, it's I, I have to. So she makes killer spaghetti. She goes in and starts <laughs> making a a very Venetian Venetia meal, which is basically Italian. Italian food. <laughs> it's like delicious crusty bread and that she made herself. Like Venetian food. My phone was trying to suggest to sell me fucking pasta for like a week. <laughs> it was like, here's an Olive Garden coupon. Here's half off noodles. Come on. <laughs> but uh, she cooks that up and it takes her about two hours to, to get the, the meal prepared. And uh, meanwhile, that's basically the hour that you know, the spell lasted. Yeah. And head rush kind of goes away. Meanwhile, she's just kind of chatting away, just kind of Nothing specific that she's talking about, but just general chit chat, small talk, uh, basically filling the the void of, of silence mm -hmm. in in the room. Um, Serafina but, is chatting away with her. Oh, good, she enjoys that. She you, you get the idea that she doesn't really care much for just idle silence unless it's just her then she's fine with it but just generally it's awkward for her when there's people involved and there's no talking but after that she you guys sit down for a meal and she's like so uh you going back to holes in the wall i don't know what we're doing I know we need to find out what's in there, because it's Death. evil. Death is in there. Well, yeah, the but devourer. I need to extract some revenge. You did take your arm. Okay, that seems <laughs> completely unreasonable, but if that's what you wish to do, she's like, hold on, hold on. And she goes into the back, and you can hear some rattling, hear some cupboards open, close. I know it's here somewhere finds another thing and she comes back out and she's like, ah, here you go. And she gives each of you this little like brooch. She's like, wear this. And it basically it's a paraffin of wound closure. Yes. So that if you are injured again, this will hopefully keep you from from just being dead. I give her so a giant pink bear hug with my new arm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's like, that's very soft. <laughs> I know, it's kind of like when you first get sunburns. Yeah. Baby soft skin. So throughout the whole Cast time we've been here. Smells like babies. <laughs> Though you kind of stink, you smell like seawater. I go smell Dagmar's arm. <laughs> <laughs> and <that. laughs> it is. It's really soft. Fifi, feel this. Clatter, 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 clatter. And she's like, happy. It's like the because <laughs> the ribs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so in case anyone noticed, the whole time that uh, we've met back up with Dagmar and done all this, Silent has been avoiding looking at Dagmar. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, um, just as a, a final 
uh, thing. She kind of looks at you. Um, should you feel the need? And she kind of glances over at the little donation box over by the the thing, you know. Oh, okay. Feel as though, you know, at some point you might want to repay the kindness. Just kind of drop it in the in the box. I will put you don't have to. Five it is gold merely pieces a in. Your donation. She kind of looks a little disappointed. Silent. I will accept that. That is Silent very kind of you. Goes <laughs> and he throws in his entire stash of platinum. So there's 70 <laughs> platinum pieces in the box Damn. right now. She's like, that is very generous of, generous of you. Thank you very much. He just feels really badly about <laughs> Dagmar's <laughs> Seraphina gives him the stink eye. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't notice. I reach into my pocket and I pull out all my coins and I like just avoid wave my that. new old hand in them. It feels weird. It feels really weird, like oversensitive. <laughs> yeah. And so I like I push half of them into the donation bag. Okay. And I put the other half back in my pouch. I still gotta eat, but I needed an arm more. Well, like I said, no pressure. But, you know. Pressure. A little bit of pressure, yeah. You gotta eat there are, When I decided to take over running this particular chapel, I think it was a very poor choice on my part. You know how many churches of Calmore there are in the city? Dozens. None as nice as yours. Have you been to the center of town? I really like it here. I do have a few regulars that's really nice. Mostly older people. I seem to really like this place for some reason. It's quiet. There's just something about it. it. Just speaks to me, I guess. Well, I gotta get ready for evening services. So. Thank you. Again. Yeah. If you need anything else, please come back. Bring in a little extra spare change. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, I'm gonna bring me something really pretty too. You just bring you. No. All in one piece. <laughs> <laughs> I hug her again. Okay. All right. Let's go kill some squids. Um, I would like to stop at a store first. Okay. Seraphine wants to buy a flask so she can put booze in it. <laughs> All right. She needed a drink after all of that. <laughs> all right, so you stressful. buy yourself a, a a nice silver flask and whatever type of alcohol you may wish to have in it. Uh, the flask will cost you about two gold pieces, unless you want something fancier. That and then about a, about a probably a gold piece to fill it with a, a relatively nice sipping whiskey of some sort. I... I'm assuming that that would be at a general store? Yeah. Okay. Get it. Or if she was very specific and wanted to go to like a silversmith or something. Just in a regular store. Seraphina is not classy. <laughs> um, I heard not classy on my head. She's not fussy. At the She's store. not fussy. She is fuck. <laughs> at the not fussy flask store, do they sell firewood? Um, Bundles? Not really. Okay, well I... There is, a, there is a place you can get firewood, though. I will buy five gold with the firewood. Do they that's have actually a... That's gonna be a ton wood. of firewood. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a whole quart of wood. I hold up my uh, ugly bag. And just start shoveling it in? Um, I paint, so I will help shovel it in. Oh, okay. But... Do they have candles here? Mm-hmm. I would like to buy, like, five candles. You don't take candles. Okay. It's a couple. This would like to buy a couple nice rations. So, oh, all right. So you're not starving. Makes sense. <laughs> just just a couple of days worth, or? Yeah, she didn't have any. She'd like some nice food. All right. Not a problem. Um, say for a gold piece each, you can have some really nice. Rations. Uh, some gourmet sushi. <laughs> Get some fish jerky and some <laughs> dried seaweed. <laughs> some eggs. Why are you looking at me like that? Because I don't want to 
say it, but it also feels like cheating if I don't say it. Do we want to roll to randomize which hand the Ring of Storms was on? Well, I which arm did you stick in there? My right arm. Alright, so roll a d6. Your right will be even. <laughs> okay. So, would it be destroyed? No, it would just be in the hole. In the soup. Kind of scratched. Yeah, have you ever heard, like, when a spoon gets in a... In a, <laughs> a, <laughs> a <spoon? laughs> That's kind of what it sounds like. Oh, no, your ring. She kind of... <laughs> where did it go? Uh... Probably where the rest of my arm went. So maybe we can magic it up when we get back. What do you think your arm looks like in there? Do you think it's just like a bunch of slime or? <laughs> it's probably like the moss, but you know, right? It's minced very finely. Mm -hmm. Someone's probably eating it. I'm not sticking my arm into any more holes. Probably a good idea. Silent can do it. <laughs> Yeah, you've got the magic hand spell. You could probably get my ring out. Well, you could just reach in and grab it. It doesn't activate until you push the button. Silent, uh, no. She is scared to put her yeah. arm back in. Be I don't want you to go anywhere near those holes again. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta take one for the team. <laughs> Uh, I already, <laughs> I took 20% for the team. Also, <laughs> I'm going to go lie, I was not expecting you to just like send the mage hand in there and just like... Well, I thought there was a timer. I didn't realize, like when she pushed it, I thought that if we didn't do something quickly, it was going to do that. Oh. So okay. I, that's what, that was the thought process going through my head. <laughs> so like, because she started it, I thought that, you know, we needed to act quickly. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should have stuck Carl. Pushed in on it. That's probably, yeah, yeah. probably been the better idea. Yeah, yeah but Dagmar just went ahead and. and I was verbalizing like, should I poke it? You didn't yeah, ask. No one said no. You didn't. I don't think you asked. I think you just did. I'm pretty. I don't remember it asking. Okay, who's at fault is not the problem here. It's <laughs> You got her on back. Here's your grudge. It's fine. Uh. I You're have making a lot of sense right now. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's cool. I don't have to stick my hand in there. I've actually got I've got I've got fishing stuff. It'll probably take me a few minutes, but I can get it out. Make yourself a stick with a hook on the end. Of I have fish fishing supplies as on my character sheet because she's a sailor, so like why not have dinner too? <laughs> All right. So, uh, what is your guys' plan on getting back? Uh, I am going to try and get drinks in and stay the night in town. I can't go back tonight. My stone won't reset. Right, but we've only got three stones and four people. Oh, that's true. Um. You gotta make the trip all the way back to Bramble Marsh to use the actual gate. Don't they have portals set up here for car shipping business? Like they were moving whole ships through? Mm-mm. -hmm. Yeah, how far is it to Bramble Marsh? In a couple days? Uh, uh, about a week and a half. How far is it to sail there from around here? About two days. No. No, I meant, oh, to sail from Arondia to Bramble Marsh. Yeah. It's two days. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, that's probably our best bet. Dagmar herself would would like very much to be on a ship because that's kind of home for her and it would be nice and less dramatic. Okay. So, so you guys basically book passage on a ship. Uh, with your sailor background, you can basically get everybody in there for free. Yeah, you, you'll just have to, to work that's on okay. the ship. She's is, down with that because it means working her new arm Yeah. and, and making that happen. It, like, yeah, build those scars back up. Yeah. yeah, you get like horrible like calluses and <laughs> blisters all over your hands yeah, and everything. Uh, when the sun does come out, it's almost like instant sunburn. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll say we book uh, basically book passage uh, on one of uh, Kara's ships because okay. the ships would move through 
there and it's I don't want to accidentally support the competition. Yeah. Okay, so. Well, she does have ships going in that direction. There are no ships that go through the portal. Okay. Yet. Yeah, because the portal is up on land mm -hmm. in a marsh. Yeah. For now. <laughs> but, so. But you spend a couple of days on a ship. Um, assuming this is like, no, this isn't your first time on a ship, is it? I think. Technically, yeah, it would be the first time. We were on that ship in the, um, where was it that we were? We were the underwater one? one? I mean, a sunken ship definitely doesn't count. No, the one with the hippo guy. Oh, oh that's, the star that's a spaceship. Yeah. I don't think starships count either. This has been a really, really weird campaign. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> So I've been on that ship, but I. I but it's still been a on waves are different, naval, right? Waves like are the astral, Yeah. Are yeah. there waves the in the astral sea? Puking. No, but it has. Most of the ships have like ship-like hulls. Yeah, I'm just saying like. So she's waves been on, in the astral sea would be like. What would the wave look like? Is it a foam which is fucking glitter? I don't know. It's crazy. Amazing. <laughs> 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 I need fan art for that. Step. <laughs> Our resident artist here. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but you guys spend a couple of days on the ship, and you make your way back to Bramble Marsh. Um, Bramble Marsh is a very small, muddy uh, town in a, well, in exactly what it sounds like, in a marsh. It's a stepping stone. It's better on the other side. But luckily, it's only about a two-hour travel through the through the small town and down the road, uh, which is there, now there's a whole brand new road that mm -hmm. actually takes you through there with a number of stone bridges and everything to actually get to this tower that is in the middle of being reconstructed. Uh, off to one side, you see that there are several guards set up in, in uh, uniform, uh, checking people as they're taking cargo up to a certain spot and then they just kind of vanish as they pass through this one area. So there's like this large archway and they just kind of pass, vanish as they pass through it. You see uh, Liam is over there kind of directing traffic and everything, um, talking to some of the people that, basically the foreman who is in charge of the reconstructing tower and everything. And he sees you guys there and he's like, hey, how are you guys doing? I got my arm cut off in a trap. It's better now. Sunburn is <laughs> hell though. Adventuring is a terrible idea. No one should ever do it. Bye. So scratches Liam off of her list of potential suitors. <laughs> it's good he's only 16. <laughs> well, we'll grow into it. I mean, she's 22. So. <laughs> <laughs> that is an out of the realm <laughs> part. I'm just gonna give him a couple more years. Face. But, uh, no, it's uh, not Liam is a is a got jet black hair that's very very straight. Uh, it's kind of about shoulder length and just like cut evenly around the, the bottom, and then he's kind of got like just kind of brushed back out of his face a little bit. Um, pale skin. Uh, these odd golden brown colored eyes they just seem a little weird but they don't glow or anything like that they're just kind of like an un unusual color um, he um, fairly good looking you know, 16 he's uh, strapping you know <laughs> somebody that spends a lot of time doing a lot of physical uh, labor and stuff like that but he has a, a certain kind of watchfulness in his eyes he's very very alert to what's going on around him. He's got a longbow that's kind of slung over his, his shoulder with a quiver and a couple of daggers and stuff. His is used. Uh, his, he's wearing um, kind of grayish colored uh, studded leather armor that has almost kind of like a rough texture to it and just kind of a simple forest green cloak. This is a step up for you, Ben. What do you mean? Well, I mean, you're more than 20 feet from your sister. Well, not really. I can just go right through there. Yeah, but I mean, it's just nice to see you comfortable enough to have her with other people. Eskin and Sandra. Yeah. But yeah, she's been, she's been good. Yeah. I brought she her was back. chasing something when we were 
up there yesterday. Yesterday, yeah, that, was who, that was three days ago. <laughs> <laughs> who knows who it was? I think actually, I think this time it was an actual bug. That would be surprising. Mm -hmm. So you guys headed back towards the island, I take it? Yeah. Yeah, we have to go back into the lagoon where the traps are. And oh. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I've been down there. Well, not, I didn't see any traps. But there was this really cool ship. I always meant to go back and check that out, but yeah. never got around to doing that. So it was a Deshay ship. And I sit, like, I stand there just chit-chatting with him, basically, as we wait our turn in line to move through the portal and explain to him the experience that we had on the ship. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's pretty creepy. I don't, I don't like Diora. I don't like that place. Diora's a little weird. I, I, I deal I'm enough with upset. undead things as it is. I don't need an entire kingdom full of it. It's sentient, because smart undead things are scarier than mindless ones. Yeah. Even if the mindless ones are fast. That's a long argument, though. Yeah. BB yeah. is chasing her tail. <laughs> it's mindless. <Beefy>. Mindless. <laughs> Beefy and uh, his sister ever met? Yes. Okay. Remember, she thinks it's just a deer. She doesn't see anything unusual about it. Oh, that's true. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's so weird. All right. Well, it was good talking with you. Yeah, you too. And uh, don't stick your hand in any no, toothy holes. No, I got my pushing holes. Hole this time. Easier said than done. Alright, with that you guys make your way back through the portal and you find yourself standing on a pinkish red beach. Uh, jungles spread out before you. The call of wild animals. Scent of fragrant flowers and fruits and the oh. gentle lapping of waves on the beach. <laughs> we need to get promised one of these poop stones so that we can <laughs> use the portal. That's smart. Because well, that means we have to go talk to Callus though. Yeah, but now you have your arm. Or Eskin. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, let's ask Eskin first. Good idea. <laughs> You don't have to go to the <laughs> wizard every time. <laughs> the wizard would like to post that note on her door. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ask Eskin? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you go back to the inn. You walk inside, and you see a number of other people in there. Uh, completely different folks than the last time you were here, which was, what, about four total days ago at this point? And you see Eskin is, again, behind the bar, only this time he's uh, very carefully uh, talking to a, uh, that same 11, 12-year-old dark-haired girl. Uh, he's got her sitting on the bar. She's wearing this very simple uh, linen dress. Uh, but now you can see her face, and when she said that she was a little odd, you kind of get the idea why now. She's pale. She looks a lot like a, the, a younger female version of Liam. The dark hair and the, the odd gold brown colored eye. The other eye is a glowing green eye. And she's just kind of sitting there and she's talking and she's got like this like weird kind of odd looking rag doll that's kind of clutched underneath her arm with like the little X stitched, stitched eyes. And she's just kind of sitting there and She's, and Eskin is explaining very, very carefully, very, very politely, you can't go around telling people about the spirits and ghosts and whatever else things you see. It makes our guests uncomfortable. She's like, okay, Uncle Eskin. <laughs> now, go play. All right. And she looks over to her side where there's nobody there, and she says, come on, Maria. And she runs off. Uh, ask him, and I wave with my good arm, my new he's like, arm. He's like, how much did that cost you? Everything I have. No, half. <laughs> it cost her an arm and a leg. She's missing a leg now. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I like that. I punch him. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't punched him yet. I was expecting yeah. it earlier. <laughs> uh, given... Uh, given both my wisdom and my intelligence, I'm actually guessing that 
Dagmar doesn't realize that you caused part of the reaction. She stuck her hand in a hole. She fucked with something she shouldn't have. Her arm got blended off. Shit, it happens. <laughs> you still but, blame yourself, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can still blame yourself. Yeah. Dagmar doesn't realize that you were over there twiddling with things. So Serafina definitely blames you. <laughs> so uh, like, that's so you got your arm back. So now what adventure are you guys off on? Oh, we're going back. I left my ring down there. Oh. With my arm. So I've got fishing tackle. Though. We're good. Um, but this is our new friend, Promise, and we want to get her. A Hello, Promise. I'm Eskin. I believe that I did see you the last time, but we didn't actually get to speak. Uh, how did you meet these fine people? We found her in a hole. They rescued me. That's pretty cool. They've uh, rescued a number of people, including myself at one point. And uh, Sandra points to the the barmaid type that's walking around and. She's nice. So, going back down there, huh? What? I didn't even have to ask. I uh, <laughs> wish you guys the well, best of luck. Is there, you guys yeah. want some food or something before you head off? Ale! What? She wants ale. Oh, ale. I thought you said you. I was like, ew. <laughs> <laughs> I knew exactly what you were saying. <laughs> pulls you a tanker of ale. I'm gonna say that house. will happily sit at the bar. Remember, the first one is always on the house. After that, you have to pay. That's this is a business. Yeah. How's my house? And she sits there and she starts talking with Eskin and drinking her ale and makes no moves towards the door. <laughs> <laughs> what are the rest of you guys doing? Uh, Serafina is going to play some music. Okay. For people. What well, people seem to enjoy it. You play something that's that's a. Uh, Kind of a sea shanty type thing or very, something Yeah, else. it's very upbeat. Alright. People have tap lines. Because there are a I number of sailors in here. Yeah. yeah so. Promise right. is like that one friend at the party who knows one person and that's Serafina and she's sticking next to her but like awkwardly. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of awkwardly like stands next to you. People Which is hilarious because you're a black. six foot tall bright red demon, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's a three foot ball potato. <laughs> Could pick her up. <laughs> it's like Artie and Danny DeVito. They're twins. <laughs> so. Um, Alright. Yeah, I guess we'll see about um, Eskin. Do you, how can we get a hold of another one of the teleportation stones? It's called oh. a poof stone. Yeah. Um, you just need to, to borrow one? Did you lose yours? No, we didn't lose ours. We just want to uh, have one at least for a uh, promise while we go back down. We need a quick way out oh. if shit turns bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. And he kind of walks back into the kitchen area and you, you see him like, lift open a, a lid. It's like one of the jars that's next to the flour and like sugar and stuff <laughs> like that. It's just a different one. Kind of run, rummages through <laughs> it. You can hear like loose change, keys. That kind of thing, he pulls out like a little, little green and purple uh, crystal and hands it to you. And he's like, here you go. This will uh, bring you basically here to Bramble Marsh or to the uh, capital city of Deora. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I will want it back though. And then maybe you guys could talk to Kalaste and, and get a, another one or I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll sell you that one for 150 gold. And then I can go down and talk to, because that's about how much it's going to cost to, to get me to go down and talk to Cal State to get another one. <laughs> Understandable. I'll give him 150 gold. All right. Silent guilt is making him spend money. <laughs> <laughs> Silent is the only one who knows about his secret stash of gold that's still somewhere in this fucking building. No, no, Silent doesn't know that. He was not with that party. Yeah. So it's only it's Kara only... and Wensu that yep. know about it. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> She can Lou tell the little girl whose name I can't remember, and she could tell us. Tessa? Tessa. Tessa. Tessa knows where it's at. Of course Tessa, Tessa knows where it's at. Tessa knows where all the bodies are buried. <laughs> <laughs> okay, street lights are on. It's time for you to go home now. <laughs> Alright, so now you have a 
is essentially a hearthstone. Thank you. Do you remember the war oh. <laughs> That's fine. That's mad. That's the cold didn't eat it, so it's fine. Right. You have to have a magic word for it to work for it. Do I know that word? You, you just the word. You to pick oh, it. Actually, Eskin probably has that word. Uh, oh. Yeah. It's you Lily. Can... Yeah, probably. No. <laughs> that, that's his name, so. Exactly. <laughs> it's his wife's name, then. She used to. Yeah. Aww. Katarina. That always means home. I just made myself sad. Like, <laughs> 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 yeah, sometimes I'll be like writing something for a character and then I'm like, and then this happens. I'm like, aww. <laughs> it's got all kinds of feelings. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so with that, you guys head back out. And you're going to go with them back to the bottom of the the lagoon where they originally found you from. All right, so it'll be fun. <laughs> so you put on the the belt of the the merfolk, which is this like yeah, fish scale rainbow fish scale belt looking thing. It's kind of gaudy, but it will allow you to breathe underwater and Very swim. Very classy. <laughs> But you guys swim back down, um, un unmolested by any of the strange creatures that you saw before. Uh, about halfway down, uh, as you're passing, basically the roughly the the level where the the sunken palace was at, you again sense a large creature that seems to swim just out of view of you. Get back down to the very very bottom swim through the passageway and come back up into the dome-shaped chamber with the odd animantine door and three holes <laughs> that are already beginning to become overgrown. That quickly. Yes. Honey, I'm home! I get out my fishing tackle. Okay. I shake my head and I... <laughs> reach in there and try and find a ring right. or reach around in there and you find uh, it's it's full of like Ew. this uh, foul smelling <laughs> rotting meat you gotta reach around in there and you you find the ring you pull I, it out and it's got still like a little bit of like bone i cast precipitation <laughs> clean it and my hand <laughs> off Yes. It's got like little like tick marks in it where it basically got chopped around a little bit. Adds character. Put it back on. <laughs> it's my grandmother's. So. Good look at you it. should feel around in there. Maybe there's more. I mean, can't be the first person to stick my hand in a trap. I really I hope I'm not the first person to stick. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I guess since I'm already in front of this one, I feel the the back. How many bumps do I feel? Three. Does he find any treasure? I'm not. Uh, I'm not you? looking for treasure. I'm not. He's like, I am purple. not sticking my imaginary hand inside your Angu. So this is the number three. I guess uh, this was the middle one. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll check the left one. The left one? You reach in there and you feel two little nubs. Two. And so the right's number one. I double check it just in case. Yes. Right. That's number one. Um, and there's far enough apart that one person can't put both arms in, right? Right. Okay. So we do. Well, technically, you can, but one and two are too far apart because it's four feet. The, the like one and three, which is basically either one of the end ones and the middle one, are only two feet apart, so you can get both hands in. So you can do two at once. You just couldn't do all three. Well, I mean, Silent could. That's true. Yeah. Like, no one else here wants to put their arms in there. But they don't have to be done at the same time, so... But it locks your arm in place. Mm hmm Alright. That is true. It does lock your arm in place. Alright. Um... So is anyone willing to help me with this, or are you? <laughs> nope. She backs up. Mm. So you got you got one volunteer. <laughs> okay. So, um, 
Which one do you want me on? It's two add threes in the middle. Um, do you want the first one or the second one? I'll take the first one. All right, so you'll be on the right. So you slip your arm in there, push the first knob, and you hear it clink. You feel the metal tighten around your, the <laughs> upper part of your arm, and then tiny little blades kind of press very gently, but very specifically up against your the flesh of your arm, pretty much the entire length of it. All right. So I'll do the left one, number two. Okay. Then the middle, number three. All right. So after the third one is depressed, you hear a clink, and then it releases your arm. And then you hear a grinding, and then a very loud click from the door back behind you. All right. Uh, so checking, the, opening the door and checking again, I want to listen again to see if I still hear the same or some more sounds or if it's quieter. Um, that'll be 20, uh, what's that? 24. Right. <laughs> uh, you're listening. Uh, you don't hear the weird, like, slurpy, oozy noise, uh, but you do hear voices again, sim very similar. They seem almost uh, flimmy in their overall, like, the way they speak, uh, and it is definitely a language that you're not comprehending at the moment. Uh, you also hear something, like a slight bite, it's almost like... I'm not really certain if it's a creature or if it's something like like heavy moving around or whatever but there's almost like a deep vibration at one point you just kind of causes the whole internal portion of the the passageway and everything to just slightly vibrate so is it a passageway that goes just one way or, it, or does the door go like is it well it goes in and you see Okay. Before you, as you guys, I'm assuming you're going to go in at this point. Yeah. And you see a door here, uh -huh. an open doorway here. It goes, it's open at the far end, but it gets dark. And then there's another door on this side and another doorway here. Okay. Meeting time. As, as you, <laughs> the entire area is lit up with this. Just like outside, this is a very dull greenish light. It's just enough for those with dark vision to really be able to see well, and just barely enough for those that, that don't have dark vision to really see at all. Well, uh, the voices that you hear are coming from directly ahead of you. Directly ahead. Yeah. You yeah. see on either side of the door behind you is a hole, much like the holes that you saw out there. There's only two of them. Okay. But you see, but as you step in, you see the the halls are, are they they almost tilt just a little bit, not quite straight up and down. Uh, looking straight ahead, even though it looks straight, something about it feels off kilter just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, the walls are this kind of damp green stone. Uh, you see these strange lines and markings uh, all along the, the walls and the floor. Uh, the doors that you see on either side have uh, kind of a strange uh, circular symbol in the very, very center of them. Uh, but you don't see any locking mechanisms or anything for it. The open, uh, the open passageways to either side that you can see just up ahead for some reason have just the smallest amount of water that just seems to kind of like drip through them. All right. Um, so how do we want to do this? Well, you guys can think about that and pick this up again next week. All right. I'm in Vegas next week. Oh. Um, and we'll move next week. And John is going to murder all of us because he put, you're, even you, you're new, it's still your fault. Because this has been sitting in our kitchen for three months. <laughs> well, it's my fault. I put a dangerous trap in a spot. Uh, we kind of 
messed it up. Meanfully <laughs> jumped into it. Do you know this has happened before? Someone. Do you remember that character that I had with the raccoon? Who was like, what's this hole? And I'm like, uh, we don't know, but it's definitely something bad. And she was like, I'm gonna check it out. And she fucking crawled into it, and it was a Cthulhu domain, and she went batshit crazy and failed yep. every will save ever and died. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was half expecting John to uh, make me do a will save, not to just go in and look for that ring. You're not you close walked, yet. You would have walked backwards like this. <laughs> <laughs> you 